everywhere. How did this person, this supposed terrorist, is able to get through security? I mean, somebody who's shepherding terrorists on the planes. I mean, this should be a three-alarm emergency with them questioning everyone at that airport day one. But for over a month, Kurt, they've been saying that you were wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, they've had the surveillance video all along, and they knew I was right all along. Uh, that's the big question. Why, you know, why haven't they admitted I was right and come out and shown the video of this man and asked us to identify him? By the way, notice what they're not, still not admitting to, the part of my story that says, Someone helped him on the plane, posing him as being from Sudan and getting him on without a passport. You're still not admitting that part of my story. Why not? Well, the fact that government would cover this up from day one is more evidence they're behind it. Uh, the fact that they were already in Yemen getting ready to launch uh, public attacks on Yemen. Uh, the fact that they were getting ready to promote the naked body scanners going in worldwide, including courthouses. Within minutes of the attack, they were saying, don't worry, the scanners are coming. We just got them because of this. Turns out they ordered them a year before. I mean, you can see this is an entirely concerted effort. And you told me privately off air, well, I don't know if you want to talk about that, that what you thought the FBI was doing in your office and the way they behaved. Uh, no, I don't really want to talk into anything we talked about off the air. Okay, um, okay. And, you know, I don't. I don't really know who's behind it or, or why it's being covered up. I mean, people can make their own judgment calls on that. All I know is that, you know, the official story has been uh, not truthful since the start, and now it's coming out bit by bit, vindicating myself and showing that, in fact, I have been telling the truth all along. Well, you were on an airplane and almost got killed with your wife. You're just telling the truth, and much of your story has been confirmed by the other passengers. Right. You know, and, you know, we're, don't lose track of the, the point, too, that we're victims here from not only Abdul Mutalab, but now from our own government. I mean, we're, we're both attorneys. We have our own business. Our livelihood depends on our reputation in the community. And here we have our own federal government basically coming out and calling us liars all over the press. We're not too happy about it. Well, you're a lawyer. Uh, I don't know if this is your specialty, but, I mean, isn't this defamation? Don't you have a suit? Uh, I, it's not my area of specialty. It's something I'm going to look into, whether I have a case or not. I, I don't know. I have retained an attorney to handle a civil suit, uh, not a defamation suit, but... Uh, I'm letting him handle that, and I don't really want to get into any more details. Oh, so that's it, yeah, breaking. But, the case hasn't been filed yet. Is this breaking news right now? Um, I, I've told a couple other reporters that I've hired an attorney, and the case will be filed shortly. But um, that's really the extent of the details I can give at this time because I'm letting uh, my attorney handle the cause of action when it will be filed. So, uh, And you can't tell us, I mean, is it against the... Aviation Administration, FBI. I'm letting I'm letting him decide uh, who he wants to take action against. I'm leaving everything up to him because I, I'm not a civil attorney. I'm a divorce attorney and a bankruptcy attorney, and th those are his areas of specialty and not mine. I understand the law is so complex. Uh, specializing is the only way to go. Um, well, well, I mean, recapping this, Kurt. I mean, this is blowing me away. That that we're talking. This came out January 22nd in both CNN and ABC, two separate bombshells. I only knew about the CNN because it's buried in here, and the ABC, it's buried in the article. And that's pretty big news that somebody can get past security and that supposed terrorists run the airport now. <laughs> I don't know that I would say that, but it's certainly suspicious why they're covering it up. And, you know, one other thing... Uh, Alex, I read another article, and I can't remember where this was, but it was in the past few days, saying when Mutalab was still in first class being arrested by the police, he kept telling them that there was another bomb on board. Again, this backs up my story that another man was arrested after he landed with a bomb in his carry-on bag. Uh, that doesn't appear in the news anywhere that I know of, uh, you know, up until I read the story a couple days ago. And Mutalab is pleading not guilty. I don't, I don't know anything about that. I don't know how he could be found not guilty. I, 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 I mean, you saw that headline that he pled not guilty, didn't you? Yeah, but that that's uh, the typical stance you take when you want to make a plea deal. So I'm really not surprised at that.
Well, my whole issue is studying black ops. This is classic. It, um, uh, in case after case, even one day in September about the Munich bombing uh, and the, the Olympics, at the end, they have the former head of German intelligence just go, oh, by the way, to free the, uh, the, the, the Palestinian terrorist, we staged a hijacking of our own aircraft to exchange. I mean, they just admit false flag terror at the end of the film narrated by uh, Michael Douglas. I mean, it, it won an Academy Award. They just put it out there at the end like it's no big deal. I've seen this so many times, it makes my head spin. The guy probably, he acted like a mental deficient. Everybody said that. His dad's saying, you know, he's going to attack. He's at these training bases. Stop him. He doesn't get on the terror list. There's other people on board videotaping. He says there's another guy with a bomb. Um, they cover up all these different facets and angles. Somebody gets him through security. I believe from past operations, the only thing that fits as a Sherlock Holmes here is he was told he was taking part in a drill, and that's why we're videotaping it. It's okay, young man. And uh, whatever they put in his pants, he didn't know what it was going to do. We know when 7-7, they'd hired some of the guys to be part of drills. There was a drill of the exact same location, exact same time, exact same place being attacked. That, that's that's 20-something Tractor Gillian. We had an actuary done on it. One out of 20-something Tractor Gillian. I forget the exact numbers. I think one out of 23 Tractor Gillian. Uh, that's trillions of times all the grains of sand in all the world. I um, mean, it's just, it's nearing infinity. But I know, Kurt, you like to stick to the facts, being vindicated, 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 but this is stinking to high heaven. Well, you're right. Uh, you know, I can't draw any conclusions from it, but you're right, it does stink. Wouldn't it make more sense for the FBI to have come out and said, look, we're investigating Mr. Haskell's claims, we'll let you know after we've taken a look at them. That's not what they did. They came out and said, basically, I'm a liar refused to show me the video. To me, they should have showed me the video from the start so I could identify this man and taken the investigation from there. They didn't do that either. Why not? And, you know, there was another article, Alex, I think it was from January 18th in the New York Times, where it's indicated that government officials uh, had wiretaps in Yemen, and they found out that someone named Umar Farouk would be attacking the U.S., and I believe it even named the day on Christmas Day this year. Now, why isn't that coming out more in the public? And if you had this information, why wasn't he stopped? Well, how did he get on our flight? I don't know. Something doesn't make sense here. Well, Kurt, take care of yourself and your wife. Be safe. Uh, incredible bombshells. We'll get reports up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. There's so many government hoaxes and cover-ups. I'm like somebody in a batting cage with 15, you know, batting machines shooting balls at me, and I don't even know where to swing now. My head is spinning. Uh, but we appreciate your courage and your observance uh, of uh, what was happening. Uh, you know, the fact that you were so observant. In the last three minutes we've got left, anything else you think you should add? Um. Just one other thing that happened since I was on your show last time. I got an email from a Dutch woman confirming my account of the sharp-dressed man. Now, she couldn't identify him, but she did indicate Abdul Mutlab was in the area that I stated and was escorted to the desk with, uh, you know, by another person, but she couldn't identify him. But she is the only other person to come out and verify my claim of what happened before we got on the plane. And to me... You know, that made me feel vindicated even more that someone else saw what I did because I didn't think anyone else did to that point. But she's afraid to come out in the public because of the, you know, the backlash that has happened to me. So um, I did get an email from her, and I called her back and discussed it with her uh, personally, and she does seem very credible to me. Well, they stage these backlashes against anybody who is taking action and, and, and telling the truth. And you've been vindicated just over and over and over again. Uh, but we will get some reports up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com with all these huge new developments uh, that you just dropped on us because it's always worse than I even know. Uh, amazing. Uh, give us your blog. Yeah, uh, my blog is my last name, Haskell, H-A-S-K-E-L-L. And then family, all one word, Haskell family dot blogspot dot com and